everyone. Matt from Workshop Tinkers here. Sorry everyone took me so long to take get this video out. I was having the darnest time trying to figure out how to put it out here that doesn't make everyone sick from me trying to point a camera and a monitor. Then I remembered I can stream and the stream ring has record only. And then I felt dumb. Uh, also, sorry about the microphone. I need to find a better setup for when I'm in my workshop and not using the camcorder and using the PC. Unfortunately, I have to use what I have right now. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do today is talk about how to get Marlin firmware on the Ramps Arduino combo. Uh, what you are seeing here is the 101 user forums. And sorry, I keep hiccuping. I'm trying to stop while I record. It keeps coming. Sorry about that. Anyways, back to this. 101 user forums. It's where I've gotten my firmware from. Marlin firmware is for most RepRap 3D printers. Not all. There are some RepRap specific. There is RepTier specific. There's a few other firmwares that work on the Arduino for these printers. I've only ever used Marlin. That's what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about the Marlin specifically for the 101 Hero because that's what I have right now. I also have Marlin for other printers but I've been doing all my videos specifically on the 101 here, so might as well continue on. Uh, the uh, firmware that I'm using is the one by Digital White Walker on the 101 user forums. If you just go to forum, then mods and upgrades, you'll get to it. It's the one called, uh, <laughs> I scrolled down too far, firmware by Digital White Walker. He has put it out here on GitHub, GitHub. GitHub, it's like GIF and GIF, which ones, I, who cares? Anyways, go to this on GitHub and you can then download the software. Clone download, opens download zip, opens the zip, it looks nice and pretty, all that kind of stuff. So you go into the zip, you unzip it, you go into the Marlin folder and then the marlin.ino. This is an Arduino file, specifically it, it's a sketch. Arduino sketch. So it needs you to install the Arduino uh, software you can get from Arduino.com, Arduino.cc. Just Google Arduino and you'll find it. Uh, the version does matter a bit. Um, I'm using 1.8.1 because it was working. And as you can see across the bottom here, I was just trying to upload this to my printer. Uh, my Arduino is a third party, non, uh, non, Arduino, Arduino, it is because it's open source. Other places can make it for much cheaper. Works for me most of the time uh, because it will. It, it's much cheaper. It's nine dollars versus forty, which is fine by me. Uh, so I'm just going to run through some of the configurations. This is already configured. Is what I am currently using. I'm just going to point out some changes I've made, and then uh, because I can't actually update it on the Arduino, I'm not going to push it, but I'll show you it's a one button operation. So I'm just going to go through this. This is, of course, for a Delta printer. The 101 Hero is a Delta Mini. It has three upright towers. The XYZ are uprights instead of the cardinal direction. Uh, the normal X is uh, back, or no, up and down. For uh, Marlin type printers, X is side to side, Y is front to back, Z is height. Unlike 3D design programs where X is up and down, Y is side to side, and Z is depth. A little bit different, but close. You, you just have to get used to it. Anyways, going through this, a lot of this will not be changed. One thing you do need to change if you're using the ramps board, ramps 1.3 slash 1.4 EFB, extruder fan bed. Extruder fan fan, I'm not 100% sure what it is. It doesn't seem like it should make a difference, but it screws things up. It doesn't work. Uh, it comes by default to Roomba. I don't, I've never used that board, so I can't speak to it. Uh, the custom Mendel name. If you want it to show a different uh, name on the screen, this is where you change it. Uh, I don't. Well, I left it like this because I didn't care that much. Sometimes I'll change it when I'm actually uh, making sure changes take. Scrolling down, delta segments per second. Default is 100. Marlin default, if you get the standard Marlin from GitHub, 
it's 200, 200, you have to stay below, uh, my experiments were saying 40 to 50 millimeters per second, because then you get stutters and zits. You don't like stutters and zits. I don't like stutters and zits. Anyways, moving on, uh, the rest of these, I believe a couple of the numbers were backwards, but it, it, it didn't matter at all whatsoever. I think the effector in the carriage was backwards, but the, as you see here, they're just subtracted. So it doesn't matter whatsoever. That's right. Uh, the thermal, the thermos, thermistors you use, default is one. It should work. Uh, if you have the J head, you might want to set it to five. Uh, once you push it, if the temperature is completely wrong, change it around until you find one that's about right for cold. It should be, some, you know, 14, 15, 17 degrees Celsius cold. Depending on your room temperature, of course. Uh, I have it set to five because I have the J head in here. Uh, when I don't have the J head, I have an E3D actual hot end. It still uses the same thermistor, the 104 GT-2. Moving on, these are specific settings. Don't touch them if you don't know what they are doing. It doesn't really matter. The max temp, you might want to set the 245 if you have the E3D or the J head knockoff with the uh, Teflon tube that goes the whole way down to the heat block. Uh, that is the E3D light. It's also preferred for the J heads because their machining is not as fine and that takes a lot of the uh, burrs out of that whole area makes it better to use. Uh, so I didn't do that because I'm using my own brain to keep from doing it, but it's just a safety factor. And you have the other heaters, but there's no pins for them, so it doesn't matter. They're just there. They're default. Just don't touch them. Uh, PIDs, bang temps. Don't don't mess with them if you don't know what they do. It's my rule of thumb. The Doc Hero, you might need to change this depending. Uh, there is a PID hot end tuning, auto tune. That will give you different numbers for this. Uh, there are other videos out there. I'm not going to cover it that are because those other videos are much better at it than I am. Uh, it's just a command to set the temperature. Do it, do PID t tuning on this extruder for this temperature this many of, this number of times. They'll tell you how to do it. Going through more K, uh, PID numbers, shrewd min temps, blah blah blah. If you don't know it, don't touch it. Here's one that is important. To you. If you're using the Superhero 101 firmware from Digital Whitewater, he has the max end stops inverted equals false. They need to be true. Uh, 101 Hero end stops are different from normal. Normal has always closed circuit, meaning there's always power going over it. And when they're activated, they break the circuit. That also is a safety factor in most printers because if the end stops break, things just don't work. It'll stop, it'll say, hey, I'm, I, I can't get off the end stop. I give up, I'm stopping. Good way of doing it, there's a little bit more safety. 101 Hero does closed circuit, open circuit to activate. It doesn't really matter. It does mean that if you have screwed up your pinouts, you've plugged them in wrong, it'll grind. Um, not something you want, but if you're fast on the power button, eh, it shouldn't matter that much. But if you haven't said it's true, either this video or the next video, I will show you how to double check your end stops. Make sure they're plugged in right, make sure they're working. Disable min end stops for Delta because we don't have any. That is also default. Default, 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 default. Everything is golden. One thing here, you might need to change. Manual Z home position. This is your total height, usable height. I have my 109.8 because my hot end, my replacement J-hand hot end is 0.2 millimeters lower than my uh, stock one. Um, I could have adjusted it out using the screws. I was lazy and didn't. So I adjusted it through the firmware because I could. I showed you how to do this in a different video when I installed the hot end. If you want to go see that one, how to figure out that height, it should be in there. Some other things you'll need to change is once you get to the default access per 
steps per unit, you'll find that they're 564 by default. And the E is some really high number that I can't remember. It's doesn't, but it doesn't really matter. If you're using the, the uh, 101 Hero default motors everywhere, leave them alone. If not, you'll have to adjust it for your motor. If you have a standard NEMA 14, NEMA 17, 200 steps per rotation, and using the default, the 16 tooth pulleys that come on the 101 Hero. What I recommend, because not all pulleys are equal, the one on the 101 Hero is just a tiny bit smaller than others. That is 100 steps per rotation, or per millimeter, sorry, with the uh, 16 micro step controllers that come with most ramps printers. You might have to look it up on the internet specific for yours, but if you get the cheap ones, they're going to be this. And my uh, extruder is 105 or 103.5, somewhere around that. Uh, you can fine tune, I just haven't yet. I'd rather have that tiny bit of over extrusion. There's actually a way in most slicers to uh, adjust for the extruder. I've adjusted all the max feed rates, max acceleration, acceleration, and retraction acceleration to up it through the roof for my printer because I've fully upgraded it. I have it back to uh, default or close to default for deltas. They're not completely to default, they're close. You might want to change this. Look up videos on what acceleration is, what jerk settings are, feed rate and stuff like that if you want to know more. Uh, default that you have is slow but usable. I've upped it a lot, pretty much across the board. Uh, Last thing I'm going to point out is if you have my large smart controller screen, you will need to activate it and you'll need to install the U8 GLib library to your Arduino. There is a link to it here and there's instructions on the link on how to install it. It's pretty easy as download the files, unzip it and put it in the library folder of your Arduino, install and then restart it. It's pretty simple. So at this point, uh, there's two things you can do. You can compile and verify, which if I do, it'll work. It'll take a minute. I'm not going to do it. And then you can push up in this upper left-hand corner is the arrow looking to the right. It is going to install it to your board. Now, my board is having issues. I actually, I know what the problem is. I need to restart the PC to fix it because uh, the config that's on the uh on the printer is what is on the uh, is what I just showed you. I'm not going to bother that. And I just turned my printer on. That's why you can hear the horrible noise the fan is making. Sorry about that. I don't know why it's going bad. I think I need to get some new ones and just replace it because cheap, cheap, cheap is cheap, cheap, cheap. I'm just going to turn on the camera now. So you should be seeing the camera showing my smart controller. As you can see, it looks, this is what the Marlin version for this, and it does have the 101 Hero pylon on it showing the room temperature is about 20. That's a little off, but not enough for me to care. I'm gonna move it and you should be seeing the printer now. I need to see what you're seeing so it's lined up right. And that is good enough. Sorry about that. It'll be in a mirror, 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 mirror. So what I'm going to do is connect my, I'm using Simplify once again, the control here. They're the same commands for all of them. They just might have buttons in a different spot. If you're using uh, Cura, there is no line uh, control, CLI type control. There is jog controls, which is just hit a button, it'll move, but not the line. So what I want to show you is a couple commands that might help you from making grinding gears. One is the M119, and that is checking your end stops. So as you can see, I'm going to come in here and press an end stop with my finger. I just issued it. They showed all open, which is good. 
Now I have one triggered because I'm pushing it with my finger. Go through and check them all one at a time. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And you might find one that's like that. Let's figure out which one. I think that's... <laughs> there it is. Okay. They had a loose wire. Sorry about that. <laughs> I should probably double check that wire sometime because I think that one's ground more than once now. Yeah. Okay. It's working for now. It might have a busted wire somewhere. Let's double check that again because I just touched it. Okay. Good. Perfect. So I've triggered it. That is the first thing, especially for the 101 hero, to make sure your end stops are working. Very important. Now, your next one, to make sure that your motors are in the correct direction. As I said when I was doing the wiring of the ramps, put them on one way. We'll test to see if it's the right direction. Well, this is the test. We verify to make sure the end stops are working with the M119, 119 command. Now, make sure it's working the correct direction. What, what I do is just Z, up and down. All three should move at the same rate in the same direction, hopefully. So you can see my hot end. So it, everything is controlled from the tip of this hot end, what direction it moves. I'm going to move it down towards the bed. So negative 10 Z, Z, British America, or America versus everyone else for that speaks English there. Um, so Z will move it down, negative moves it down, closer to the table. And it's doing nothing because it doesn't know where it's at. So I have to go back and do a G29, 28, G28. So what you want to do for G28, this is a homing function. This won't let me move it until it knows where it's at, unfortunately. Um, so what it's doing is it's going in and touching off. When you issue the G28 command, you must watch it. I would recommend not having it at the top. And uh, all my motors are currently activated. So. Before you turn everything on, everything should move by itself mostly. If I turn off my motors, where's my disable motors? Okay. It'll move by itself. Or you can move it. If you enable motors, it's kind of locked in place. It's just putting current through it. Uh, you should have this these commands. I don't remember what the actual, there is G code commands. Uh, M7, M18 and M17. So disable is M18, enable M17. That's what it is. Uh, so what I'm going to do again is your first command is G28. For the 101 hero, all three should move up. If they move down, stop it, change the wiring direction, flip them around on the three X, Y, and Z axes. If they all move up, you should be golden. And they're going to touch off at, they're going to move up until one touches, then they're going to move slowly and touch all three in order. Now, if you have everything wired up, it'll touch and it'll move down a little bit and it'll go back. Now, the only other thing is do the same thing for an extruder. The extruder on Marlin has a minimum temperature. It has to be at least 165 before it'll extrude or it disables it completely. So you turn it on some way, some shape, some form. I'm not gonna wait for it to uh, fully heat up, but basically all you do is you have it extrude and watch to see if it extrudes. If it doesn't, flip it around, try again. If it does, fantastic, perfect. Next step is to load an STL file into your favorite slicer, slice and print. I will go over, I'll probably retouch on these configs or on these controls using Pronter Face in my next video, just to have a little bit of variation. Then I'll show you how to load an STL file and how to load it on the printer some way, shape, or form. Uh, because I'm using ramps, I have an SD card reader. I can print any file. I don't have to rename it with 101 Hero. I will uh, 
get to that on the next video. Until then, keep uh, have a good one. Uh, ask me questions related to this video. Let me know if you want me to make new, more videos with answering specific questions. Uh, otherwise, keep tinkering. I'll see you next time.